EGLD explained, Elrond EGLD crypto, Elrond coin, Elrond crypto, Elrond network. Well, this is actually a heavily requested video on a review on Elrond. So I did a read on the white paper and here are my findings. I'm going to present to you what basically Elrond does that is different from other blockchains. And you're going to learn a lot about sharding. If you're new or you're non-technical and you're really wondering what sharding is because that is something that Ethereum 2.0 is trying to implement right now in order to scale because scaling is really important right Right now and I'll explain to you why. And I'm going to explain to you a story because I made a really bad move. So months ago when I started reviewing HOT, which is Holochain token, I didn't realize that HOT was actually a ticker for both Holochain, which is an ERC20 token and a HOT token. I forgot what it's called actually. I think it's HOT now, which exists on Stellar Chain. So two completely different things. And I bought the one on Stellar Chain. So I screwed up. So I flipped that back to ETH. The big problem was that I did not realize that gas fees are actually hidden to the users when you trade on liquid because I was using the liquid exchange to trade this hot and Ethereum pair. So if you use MetaMask, they usually tell you the gas fee like all the time. How much are the fees for the gas? Now, if you do a swap on liquid, they don't tell you that because when I traded my hot, it was $250, but changing it into ETH, I only got $180 of ETH. So where did that $70 go? It went to the gas fees because gas at that point in time in the afternoon, it was really, really expensive. So if you're doing anything with ETH, do it at midnight if you're living in North America because the gas fees during the daytime, super expensive right now. So lesson right in the first minute of this video is stay away from liquid exchange. I think they have some really sketchy tokens or they just list tokens in order to grow their exchange, even though a lot of the tokens have the same ticker symbol that may mislead you to what you really want, which is what I don't like. And they have that hidden gas fee that they don't show to the users. So any new users are wondering why are they paying so much for fees and getting a lot ripped off from them. So I don't want that to happen to you. So stay away from that. Just use something like Binance or Coinbase, which gives you an idea of how much their fees are when you're doing swaps. So that's my advice. All right. So really, Elrond really does help solve this problem, which is what we're going to talk about today. So if you haven't already, please be sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and let's get into the video. So I've been talking about this in the last couple of videos. So the problem with current infrastructure is that when compared to our centralized structures, our current public blockchains really suffer from scalability. And this is the main thing that is holding back adoption by the mainstream and public use. Here's the challenge for any public blockchain to scale, it must have the following full decentralization that is eliminating the need for any trusted third party, hence removing any single point of failure, robust security that is allowing only secured transactions and fending off any known attacks that are known attack vectors, high scalability, enabling the network to achieve performance to at least the level of our centralized counterparts and that is measured in transactions per second efficiency that is operating with minimal energy requirements and computational requirements, cross chain interoperability. That means that allows you to communicate at no end with any external services. Elrond is really a redesign that is secure, efficient, scalable, and interoperable. And its contributions rest on two fundamental building blocks, adaptive state sharding and a secure proof of stake consensus mechanism. Right, let's talk about adaptive state sharding. So sharding is the process that Ethereum is implementing right now. The idea is really to break up the blockchain into multiple different pieces, which can be handled by different participating validators. And validators are pretty much the guys or the nodes that are verifying the transactions that people make. So how I imagine it, it's like building a puzzle. But instead of everybody building one puzzle together, everybody grabs a stash, a handful of puzzle pieces and build their own sections of the entire puzzle and then combining them together at the end. So what happens is instead of having everyone verify all the transactions, the nodes are only responsible for a fraction of those transactions. And this allows for many transactions to be processed, to be verified in parallel, which acts kind of of like multiple highways. And as more validators and more people stake, the network will expand and the number of transactions that are processed will also grow. And this is what we call a horizontal scaling. There's really three types of sharding methods that I want to go over with you. And the last one is what Elrond uses. The first one is network sharding. And it is when nodes are grouped into shards, which allows them to communicate better because messages inside a shard is faster to communicate than if you're communicating through the entire network. And this is really the first challenge in any sharding approach. If I'm talking another language to you, then just imagine this. Imagine that you're living in a country, which you are right now. Now imagine how much easier it is to communicate in the country that you're born in, that you grew up in versus another foreign country. So I grew up in North America, so I communicate best in English. If you put me in China, I'm still learning Chinese. It's going to be very hard for me to get around. So that's kind of like network sharding. So we're all living inside one shard. If we're North Americans, we're living in North America 
America, it's easier for us to communicate with each other. If you put us in China though, oh man, we're gonna be kind of screwed. Now, the second one is transaction sharding, which is completely different. It's basically the thing that handles which shards process which transactions. And then we have state sharding, which is the hardest sharding approach, which is what Elrond does because each shard only maintains a portion of the state. Transactions might affect multiple shards and your nodes are reshuffled from time to time. So there's a lot of moving parts, which is what makes it difficult. So imagine you're a polygot and you're communicating with many different countries for your work in order to get updates. That is a way harder job than that network sharding salesman who only works in one country and communicates with people within the same country speaking the same language. So the benefits of state sharding is mainly that you can do way more transactions at a lower cost, which are the obstacles for mainstream adoptions of crypto. All right, so let's talk about Elrond's secured proof of stake. This is basically an upgrade of Algorand's proof of stake mechanism. It's faster. What we know is we know that all transactions needs to be verified by validators in order to be added to the ledger. In Algorand, it can take up to 12 seconds to select a random committee or the consensus group, we call it, to do that verification. In Elrond, the operation takes less than 100 milliseconds because their algorithm doesn't require communication to select the consensus group. In Elrond, a node's probability of being in the consensus group takes into account the stake and the rating. So if you do a bad job and you get slashed, then your ratings go down. If you do a good job, then you get rewarded and your ratings go up. That is what your stake is doing when you stake Elrond. All right, so if that made no sense to you, then let's explain it like this. You are part of a big company and every time you have to make a decision, you have to gather around a group of people. Now this company has 5,000 people. So you gotta really think about which of those 5,000 people to select. That is gonna take a lot of time. I don't know, let's say 12 seconds. But in Elrond, smaller company, let's say it's smarter. There's not 5,000 people, there's 10 people. So picking a consensus group is easy because there's only that many people. So it's faster. It's about, I don't know, let's say less than 100 milliseconds. Analogy, I don't want you to focus on the number of people because Elrond can have 5,000 people like Algorand. The really big difference is their algorithm. Algorand, for example, has a person selecting the people while Elrond has a machine, an algorithm selecting people, which is why it's much more faster. Let's talk about the architecture. We have the usual. We have users and nodes. Users being people like you and me who holds multiple wallets with Elrond. We use the Elrond network in order to make transactions. That is like value swaps and smart contract executions. Nodes are basically devices on the Elrond network and they're responsible for running consensus, adding blocks, maintaining state, and being rewarded for their contributions. What's different for this network is that this network is divided into smaller pieces called shards. And a validator or node is assigned to a specific shard by an algorithm. And this algorithm really balances the number of nodes in each shard. And each shard has a randomly selected consensus group, which will verify transactions. Elrons or ERD are utility tokens that are used for processing transactions, running smart contracts, and rewards are paid out or contributing to the network. All right, we're really close to the end of this video. For the next video, I want you to watch my Gemini credit card and Walmart dropshipping video because that video teaches you how to make passive income without doing anything leveraging the bank's money. I know we talk about cryptocurrencies here a lot and cryptocurrencies are great, but that's still portfolio income. It earns a little bit of passive income, like at most two to 4% for most cryptocurrencies that are safe, which you're probably invested in, but we don't wanna sell that. We still wanna earn that passive income, but in order to make the big income, we need to sell it. We don't wanna sell it. So this Gemini credit card and Walmart dropshipping business is a way to make some passive income up to 20% ROI every single month based on how much money you're leveraging. So if you're leveraging 100K, that means that you could basically make 20,000 per month. So check out that video right after this video and I'll see you over there. All right, guys, see you later. Let's talk about Elrond and other projects because in the white paper, they really compared themselves to other mainstream blockchains. Elrond was designed upon and inspired by ideas from Ethereum, Omniledger, Zeliqua, Algorand, and Chainspace. When they wrote this, Ethereum was still working on proof of work. So right now, now they're migrating to proof of stake, but still compared to Ethereum, Elrond eliminates energy and computational waste with their secure proof of stake and sharding mechanisms. And Elrond and sharding is one of the things that ETH is able working to manage on right now. That and compared to Omniledger, Elrond has adaptive state sharding, which is faster and more secure because it replaces validators more frequently than Omniledger. Compared to Zilliqa, which I think is how you pronounce it because I've never heard of it before, but Elrond has the upper hand again by state sharding because Zilliqa uses proof of work, which is the same mechanism that Bitcoin 
Bitcoin users. In addition, Elrond aims for compatibility and interoperability so that Ethereum smart contracts, they can eventually be ran or be ran on Elrond VMs. And as mentioned before, when we compare Elrond and Algorand, Elrond is much faster, 100 milliseconds versus 12 seconds for selecting a consensus group. And Elrond uses sharding versus Algorand's single blockchain solution. Said in the beginning of this video, the whole game is to make it so that these blockchains can actually perform as well as our centralized options. So Elrond took Visa as an example. Visa on average can do 35 And with 64 shards, Elrond is capable of doing 2.4 million transactions per second. So in conclusion, it really looks like Elrond is just taking scaling as the main competitive advantage. I don't know where this is going to go because after Ethereum implements scaling as well with the same sharding mechanism, well, maybe not completely the same, but with sharding, I don't know if Elrond is going to stay around. So that's it for today's video. If you got some value, if you learned a little bit about Elrond and sharding, then can you please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, check out these other videos on cryptocurrencies passive income and i'll see you guys next time peace